I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. You were always known for your proportions and your balance, Danny. Was uh, did that come pretty naturally? Did your legs develop oh, equally? You know for me, when I when I was growing up and, and looking at the guys as I got better, I said the only chance that I have is to have every body part develop. Yeah. No matter what. And so I used to work every body part hard: calves, hams, abs. You know, deltoids front, back, side. So I did constant work, the same exercises, except as I got better, I added a little weight. Yeah. And so that's what made a difference for me. Constantly working the whole body, never got lazy. I did the calves hard, two or three yeah. different exercises for calves. So when it came time, and I was blessed, you know, uh, for me, eating right and training and whatever else I could throw in the body, I just reacted. Yeah, I had those perfect cells that blew up like a balloon. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I you know I did it a couple times. Nobody could believe it. Yeah, yeah. Because back in the seventies, not a lot of guys had great legs, right? But you had great no, legs right off. Not the bat. at all. He yeah. even Arnold, as much as people say his legs were weak, he was good for that time. Yeah, he had yeah. great legs for that time. Right. You had, you had a surgical or a surgeon Nubre, tremendous upper body, but the legs were a little shy. And mm -hmm. even Robbie at his best. He had great hams, but the quads in the front were slightly off, and the calves were high. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to me, one of the greatest physiques ever was, was Sergio Oliva. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that guy was not human. Right, right. I mean, and he was as strong as he looked. You know, he, he had little waistline, huge quads, tremendous lats, arms, show. I mean, he had it all. Even Arnold admired him. Arnold yeah. not knocked one time to the Shrine Auditorium to go see Sergio. And we were told, <laughs> if you go there, you'll get, if you go to the, that contest, you'll you'll be yeah. banned from the IB. Him and I snuck in to watch you. That's how much he thought Sergio was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. What so, was the, when was the first time you saw Sergio? I, I saw Sergio. Because uh, they used to have all those IFBB shows in New York, right? Yeah. Really when, yeah. when that first Olympia, his first Olympia. You saw his first Olympia? Wow. Yeah. When I first saw him, I was a kid. Yeah. And I couldn't believe he was tremendous. I know. Yeah. Nothing I've never seen. And, you know, and he really, he, he didn't diet hard, you know, he just no. trained. Yeah. He, he had a great base from all that Olympic lifting. Yeah. So he just developed a complete, a, a physique as complete as you can get it. His posing could have been better, but he, he was just to me, he was the man. I know. Yeah, I, I grew up in Chicago and, um, you know, he was living out there and I would see him at contest, you know, with the split sleeve shirt, you know, and all the gold medallions and stuff. And I tell people today, I'm like, you had to see him in person to understand. He was when he unbelievable. Room, when he walked in the room, everybody looked. Yeah. He, that guy. Yeah. That's how good he was. Yeah. He was freaking, he was a freak. Yeah. And him and I got along pretty good, but he always argued with Joe, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I never forget the one time uh, freaking uh, we were in, I think it was in uh, where were we? we were not Chicago we were in uh, not San Diego we were in some show in California might have been Frisco and Joe Weider sitting there I'm sitting with Sergio we're talking and and then Joe Weider comes over and they're talking and he was saying to me in Spanish this guy you gotta watch him you know he, he just, he was, <laughs> if, if he had been a little more down, you know, level off, he probably would have done so much better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he was a very proud man, you know? Right. And I'll never forget a bodybuilder came over and, and we're him and, him and I are talking and he says, look at the legs on this bodybuilder and the kids showing the legs. And so he says, get the hell out of here. We're eating now. What's the matter with you bunch of, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so Joe, Joe's like, "What's wrong with this guy, Don? Tell him to take it easy." I said, "He can't help himself." <laughs> but he was just a proud guy, and he, like I said, no, not get the hell out of here. <laughs> that poor bodybuilder didn't know where to jump. Right. Yeah. 
Hey, let me take you back a little bit, Dan. We skipped over a couple of the shows. Um, tell me about the 78 Olympia. That was your first Olympia. That was in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, you did pretty good. You got sixth place in that show. Well, you know what? I, I, I was training and I said, what are my chances here? You know, do I really have a chance? Are they going to let a short guy ever do well? Yeah. So I, I trained pretty hard and I, it, to my surprise, I, I did very well compared yeah. to top six. Yeah. You know, top six is, is no, nothing to be ashamed of. Right. You know, and back, you know, and like I tell guys back in the day there to be a pro, you had to be a Mr. America or a Mr. Universe winner. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Today I got guys to tell me the pros. I go, <laughs> in the IPV, no, I'm in the Joe Moke show. Well, where'd you win it? I, in the high school on Ridge Road West there. <laughs> He's got a pro card. Right. So, you know, not the kind of guy says, well, congratulations. You know, I'm not going to come over. Yeah, yeah. Because he's so proud of his pro card. So they right. give him up like M&M Peanuts now, you know. But <laughs> right, I, right. I, I guess it's a way to make money because you got to pay to have the card, right? Right, right. So yeah. The association makes money. But, yeah. yeah, that was, for me, it was, it was like an enlightenment because I'll be honest with you, I never took this thing serious hmm. like I could have. and yeah. Joe would say to me all the time why aren't you high you could be the best of the world I said for what Joe they don't let little guys win right. I, 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 I tell you what I did a show in New York I'll never forget it uh night of the champions oh, I, I want to ask you about that I don't know yeah. if you remember back then yeah yeah guys were getting 300 yeah they're the, giving points right they, it was like it was like a, a gymnastic where they hold the card up yeah, yeah. I'm coming from Europe, okay? And Joe's taking pictures of Mike and Robbie at the Gold's Gym. Okay. Not, not the original, but the second. It was on 2nd Street now. Santa Monica, yeah. Santa Monica, uh, Ken Sprague's gym. And so I came in because I had just done a bunch of seminars and a tour, and I wasn't really in great shape. And I said to Joe, what's going on? Oh, they got that show the night of the champions in Beacon Theater, but hell, you'll never be ready for that. <laughs> And I said, so you're not going to take pictures of me, you know, busting, busting the chops. Yeah. Just why am I going to take pictures? You ain't got a prayer. And <laughs> Robin says to him, why are you saying that to him, Joe? That guy's nuts. Don't do that. You're going to piss him off. <laughs> so I said, all right, Joe, we'll see. We will see. And that was another show. I did 21 days of starvation. Really? I would, 21 days. I would wake up with saliva on my pillow. <laughs> That's how bad it was. And mm -hmm. I got in pretty damn good shape. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I'm going to New York, and I'm flying, and I get there, and on the way there, I'm eating Snickers because I hadn't had carbs in 21 days. Right. And so Joe's like, Donnie, are you in shape? What, what are you eating that shit for? <laughs> said, Joe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not sure. You know, Joe, I'm scared. I wasn't scared. I was ready. <laughs> And, and so I, I, you know, and at the time I said, all these guys pros the Exodus and all this crap. I'm going to, I'm going to pose a short people. <laughs> yeah. That was the show, right? That was the yep. one. Yeah. And so I get out there and I get out there. And so I get into the back room and, a, and, a, and Nazaro comes up to me, Joe Nazaro. I don't know if you remember him, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. New, New York. And he looked at me and he says, you know, Dan, I'm going to kick your ass here tonight. I said, Joe, put a little oil on my back because that's all you're doing here tonight. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> and, and so, I, you know, I just sat there relaxed. And, and, you know, at the last minute I pumped up because the theory that Arnold and I would have was if you pump up too much, as you come out there, you shrink. I, we would pump just a little bit before so that we were all full and the guys were shrinking. Right, right. That was, that was our concept. Yeah. But make a long story short, uh, you know, I, I was ready. And, and so of course, Joe came in the back. And says, oh, my God. You look tremendous. You know, you should sign a contract. I said, Joe, after the show, we'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so right now, I got to get ready to win. I, I want to win this show. So I get out there and I get out there and all of a sudden you're short people got nobody. And I went <laughs> like that. And the audience went nuts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Little eyes, the point of the bicep that went beep, beep, beep. The audience, it was like tremendous. Yeah, I got yeah. a stand ovation. Really? I had to come back. And I'll never forget, Gloria Cole was there. 
and he's and then right after me was uh uh Ed Corning. Oh with his okay. yeah, I did it yeah. my way. So I'll never forget the guy said we gotta pose after that. But <laughs> I, you know, I won every round, I scored 300 and lost. So how did that happen? In the post well, you lost? Here's, here's what they did. It, what people don't remember is they never did pose downs before. Right. So they, they came to us and said, look, we're going to have a new thing called pose down, and it's just for the audience. It counts for nothing. Okay. It counts for nothing. So, all right, so me and Robbie get out there. We're posing down. After the third or fourth pose down, I said, this is bullshit. I know what they're doing here. Now, I scored a perfect score and lost. And then they said the reason they lost because Danny stopped posing. He walked away. Oh, man. That was the excuse they had. And so so, so I, how, I, did they, how did they do that back then? I don't, then? They, I they don't care what anybody says. I won it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So they, well, took, the score said, from the, they, they took the score from the prejudging, and then they added a couple points from the pose down, right? And then Robbie. No, because, but no not at all, because when the show was over, Robbie had 298. I had 300. Hmm. And I still lost. What did they say? How could they play that? I didn't even bother. Wow. Hmm. I packed my bags and went home and went back to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> That's That was, you know, for me, I yeah. tried. I yeah. also I gave it a good try. Yeah. Let me ask you about the uh, 80 Olympia, because that's today, even today, you know, over 40 years later now, they're still talking about this contest as one of the most controversial. So did you know uh, Arnold was going to compete in that show when you were going to? Yeah, I knew because you know what? Arnold came back from doing a movie or something, I think it was. And he was light. But yeah. I knew that Arnold could gain weight. And he's training twice a day. So the word, you know, everybody's like, he's not going to enter the Olympia. I said, are you kidding me? You guys smarten up. He's going to enter the Olympia. And uh, so at the time, Franco was doing I don't know what. And so Eddie trained with him. Eddie became his training partner. So he's training twice a day. He's getting better and better. And of course, at the time they're pushing Mike and you had a lot of other guys that were going on. And yeah. so we had to fly to us. We, we flew to Australia and we get there in the back and then we have a meeting. And at that time they decided to drop the under and over 200 or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. There was a meeting cause I wasn't paying attention. And, and then, uh, uh, Mike said, well, why are we doing that? I mean, we've they've done it this way for a long time. Now you guys are changing the Olympia for you. Uh, and then uh, Arnold said to him, well, something of this nature. He said something like, well, we can't help it that your belly was sticking out because you ate too much or something like that. Right, right. And so I, uh, Mike almost charged over and then Waller stepped in between. Waller stepped in between. Yeah, I seen the picture with Mike. Come on, guys, calm down. Yeah, but that's what truly happened. I mean, everybody will deny it, but what did almost, you? They almost so came you, best. So you knew that uh, Arnold was going to compete, right? So you weren't Absolutely. that surprised when he showed up at the meeting, because I heard everybody was like shocked when he showed up at the meeting. I wasn't shocked. No. I knew. Come on, you don't train twice a day for nothing. Yeah, for nothing. He not, for eight weeks, six weeks, right. whatever it was. Right. Right. I know Arnold. I know well when he's got something planned. He didn't yeah. fool me. I wasn't shocked. As a matter of fact, I'll be honest with you. This is a true story that, you know, people that say, oh, Danny's full of it. Arnold had always had a carrot cake that he would eat. And he had this poor guy say, now, I got this cake so when I get ready. Because he would eat in between, you know, a small piece for carbs to carb up. When he's training? And, or, or at yeah. the contest? And right, right, no, right at the contest. At the contest, okay. And he had this kid with the carrot cake. The poor kid turned around. I opened the locker. I see the carrot cake. I take a good chunk of it. <laughs> so I hear Arnold say, "What happened to the cake?" You know, <laughs> you're supposed to watch the cake. <laughs> True, I I stole a piece of carrot cake out of him, but yeah. But you know what? I watched the show, and the guy that was more to me that surprised me was at the, at the time Roger Walker. Yeah, most true. And at the time, he was big like we've never seen before, and he had a little bit of lines, and he looked pretty much, you know, very competitive. Yeah. And so. Arnold ended up winning the show. For me, I I always said, look, was it the Arnold we're used to? No, but it was enough to win. It was enough to so win. I, okay. I saw it. In my eyes, it was enough for Arnold to win. It wasn't the best of Arnold. So you don't think it was this Nobody that was there that was outstanding, it could be him. Okay, okay. 
And believe it or not, the guy that came closer than anybody was Roger Walker. Yeah. Okay. And that's where he became famous because then he started training and they tried to push him, but he just, you know, for whatever reason, he had a hard time dieting. Yeah. But for me, that show, as controversial as it was, you know, I'm saying, was he perfect? No, but it was just enough to win. Okay. All right. That's interesting because I talked to a lot of people that were there. I talked to a lot of the competitors who were in it. And uh, everybody's got a different take on it. So, of yeah. Course, like, ah, he couldn't have won. He didn't look that good. I know Boyer was upset. And Dennis right. Tenorino. And, and Mike, of course, was pissed off. Yeah. Uh, and to me, I was there. I looked. Like I said, who's, who could have beat him that night? Right. Yeah, they all complained. But which guy thought they should have won that show? You yeah. know, Zane couldn't have won it. Because his he, he was better after. Yeah. Uh, Mike, to me, was a little off. Who, who was left? You know, who could have beat him that night? How about Dickerson? I'll remember, the, the, the champion gets a free round. You know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about Dickerson? What did you think of him? Uh, Dickerson physique. I, look, Dickerson was a wonderful guy. But to me, his physique was all a suspect. Yeah. His biceps were weak. He had a great posing routine. He had pretty good legs. But how he won, how he got second in the Olympia, I didn't even know. I don't even know how he won Olympia. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, you know, not and he was tremendous, but to me, he wasn't an Olympia guy. And you thought Mentor was a little bit off too. Uh, for me, like as he got better, he improved all his body parts. But it, to me, like the chest could have been better. Yeah, mm -hmm. on Mike. Yeah, but like the legs were tremendous, the shoulders and arms were tremendous, and yeah. the back could have had a better flair. But it so did Arnold. Arnold, you never seen Arnold doing a last spread. No. No. no, it was always that double by turn around almost muscular. Yeah, right. He did the last spread only when he had to, and then he used what I want you to see. Yeah. He immediately got out of it. Right. So, God, right. nobody was perfect. Yeah. What did you think when Franco came on stage with the towel? Do you remember that part? With, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that he would do that. But yeah. <laughs> Franco was always a very proud guy and very aggressive. Yeah. But you know what? Franco was a great athlete. Yeah, he was. You no, know, yeah. that guy was a great athlete. Uh, yeah, uh, and he was a very proud guy, and he was—he had a tremendous physique. He did, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was—he was good. Yeah, I thought you looked great in that show, Danny, in 1980. I seen the videotape of it. Your arms were huge. You were in great shape. You know, I was in pretty good shape, but again, you know, it was a long flight, and when I seen these guys all arguing, I said, "Oh, this is going to be a mess." Yeah. And for me, I just said, enjoy the show and go home. Yeah. But, you know, I, I got in pretty good shape, but it wasn't enough to even compete with these guys, I thought. Hmm. But again, even no matter how good I was, I, it was hard because they just, once you hear short class or the guy's not tall enough, you know, for me, you never knew how tall I was in a picture if you took it by yourself. Yeah. You never, that's my portion of yeah. Like, you would never say he's 5'2". Right. But as I got better, you know, the little guys, they accepted it because Franco finally won the Olympia and then he won it again. And yeah. I think I didn't get lazy at the end because, you know, after the 81 Olympia, I said, you know what? I competed against Franco. He won. And if he's the best man for that night, then he's the best man. And yeah. I just accepted it. You never hear me crying about the 81 Olympia. No. Never. Yeah. You never heard me crying. I never, ever. And they would ask me, and I say, this is what I think happened. Take it for what it's worth. Yeah. But you never heard me complain or cry. So what was your motivation for coming in so ripped for that show, Dan? You know what? It was like, people say, well, Dan, you never get cut up enough. You're huge. Mm -hmm. You never get cut up. Right. I don't think you can get cut up. I yeah. said, all right, I'll show them. <laughs> and also, my motivation was to prove to people that you didn't need all the protein that everybody said you did. You needed the carbs and the fats more than the, than the proteins. Okay. So it was just, uh, you know, for the hell of science, I said, let me stand 100 grams of car or protein and never go past that and see how good I can do. Okay. And, and so at the end, you know, I switched it all around, but I just want to see how cut can I get and maintain a good weight. Like I said, on a, on a Monday, I weighed about 159, 160. I ate all the way up. Wow. I ate, you, you know how you gain weight. So how do people think I lost weight eating Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Right. I, I had to gain 20, 20 pounds. <laughs> you, know, you blow up like a balloon. Yeah. But I kept getting more cut. 
as I ate, I got more cut. Right, right. Body exploded. Wow. And so when I got on stage and I didn't even have to pose. I would just make a fist and everybody would go, holy cow, what's that? Right. And then I walk out of the line and stand up to Franco and they get pissed and send me back. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Then I did it again. Yeah. And then I threw a pose and everybody got out of line through stutter poses and they <laughs> said, if you do that again, we're going to deduct the point. And I said, who cares? I'm not going to win anyways. Right, right. <laughs> did you think it was going to be uh, set up for Franco way before you went in it? Well, people said it was. People said yeah. he it's set up for Franco. That's why you're no, no, right? Right. So I said, look, Joe Weider doesn't fix shows because he owns everybody anyways. Yeah. Whoever wins, he's got their picture. So why would he do that? He would never do that. Right. So for me, I said, I don't care if it's set up. I want to compete against Franco. I'll never be able to compete against Franco again. Yeah. And that was my motivation. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. I didn't care who won the show. If I got lucky and got one, ah, all right, but but I didn't. But at the same time, though, you know, years later, people still compare those pictures. Yeah. Just, they still they tell me, well, Tom Platt should have won. Yeah. Come on. Tommy's body, he looked great, but it was boxy. Yeah. You know, he, but he's, I thought he beat Chris for sure. Yeah. I thought Roy Callender could have moved up with me. Yeah. Franco should have been maybe fourth. Yeah. That night. Or fifth. If, you know, and there was other guys out of the lineup that looked tremendous too that never, you know, they kind of got screwed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for, for me, you know, I was saying, wow, they gave me fifth. I thought they were going to throw me right out the lineup. Yeah. But, but I, you know, I got the fifth. So, you got to take what you can get. And, yeah. You know, I never cried after shows. Because every everybody will hear, I should have won this show. <laughs> I got screwed. And there is one. It's like the guys that go to jail. I'm innocent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same bodybuilders. Right. I, I should have won that show. I should have won this show. I don't know what that job. You know, it's like give me a break. Yeah. You know, when you get on stage, it's just an opinion. Yeah. Right. Right. No, that's the reality. No matter how good you is, it's their opinion that night. This guy looks better, and yeah. that's it. Be it true or not. So I again I never took the sport the way I should. Serious. What'd you think of um uh the booing at that contest? Because it started with you. I mean they gave Joseph Wilcox six. That was okay. But then once they announced you fifth, man, whew, that place went up for I'll never forget when they called me fifth, they booed and they threw papers and they got up and walked out. See what people don't realize by the time that show the 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 award, the place was empty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, empty. I was there. Yeah, it was empty. There was nobody yeah. there. And Franco was, there's no audience for Franco to get his trophy with. <laughs> Very right. few people. Oh, and Joe, who sat there in shock, you know. Yeah. Joe was in shock. Yeah. He was upset. Yeah. Trust me when I tell you. I know. I won't even repeat what he said. I won't even repeat what he said. All I can tell you, what he said made Arnold create his own show. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All of a sudden, Arnold's classic came from that. Because that's how upset Joe was. Yeah. So, uh, he, you know, I remember him saying, you guys destroyed my show. What is, you know, and audience got, and then when I walked out to go to the hotel, all these people were behind me. There had to be a thousand people saying, oh, Danny, please, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Uh, you want us to get Franco? I said, are you nuts? <laughs> they, they wanted to fucking attack Franco. <laughs> Poor Frank, the, one of the best bodybuilders in the world. So I said, no. So I went to my room. I laid down and my, my buddy Larry was there. And uh, I said, I just got it. I'm tired. I got to take a nap. I laid down for 20 minutes. I said to the bake, let's get up and go eat. I opened the door and all these people in the hall. And the lady says, I made you a carrot cake. I heard you like carrot cake. Oh, said, wow. Wonderful. I put it in there. I appreciate it. And they kept saying, are you okay? I said, I'm fine. The show's over. I got things to do tomorrow. And I ain't going to be crying over a show. I said, I was here to compete. I competed. I did the best that I could. And it's over. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to cry. And you never heard me cry. No. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know how long ago, a week or two after that, I went home uh, and I flew back to L.A. to go visit, take a break. And on a, they had done a slideshow of the Olympia. And so 
They got through with the slideshow. I got there too late. And I said, what's going on? He goes, oh, we had a slideshow. They said, we had a slideshow. We put it all away. And then Arnold looked at me and said, some people thought you should have won. I said, where, what do you think? Where was the slideshow at that? It was at the World Gym. It was like a private show with Joe Gold. Was it guys. in L.A. after the show? Okay. In L.A. after the show. And they, okay. they had like, John Balick had these slides, I guess, of the show. Okay, okay. And, and then I never got to see it. But... Hmm. Uh, Arnold said, some people thought maybe you should have won. I said, what did you think? He goes, I, I'm not a judge. <laughs> but, you know, he was for Franklin. So, you know, I never, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. buddies. I would have done the same thing probably. Right, so, right. I, you know, it's, look, we all know we take chances we could beat bodybuilding. Right. And win some, you're going to lose some. And yeah. I knew for me, just the idea that I could compete with heavyweights, you know, yeah. Um, that was an honor in itself. Yeah. And to be hated by heavyweights. They used to say that midget beat me again. <laughs> Something's wrong here. Right. Listen, we did a show in Philadelphia one time that Snyder, I don't know if you remember Snyder. Snyder, Snyder yeah. Very yeah. Good. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we did a show and we were all on stage and I wasn't even in any kind of shape. I mean, I was in shape, but it was like, I just did it because I, I was obligated to a contract. So I trained down and, and I got out there and we're doing a posing, and uh, the guys are posing down. I run on get up top of the box, start doing some poses. So then they all try to get on the box, get down. And then I, one of the guys says, and I won't repeat who it was, he says, why is this asshole get allowed to do all this crazy stuff? And then he tried to hit me. because <laughs> yeah. I kept, Yeah, I kept cutting him off. I cut him off, and I got on stage, and he wanted to shove me. And, you know, it was crazy. But, and then the audience went, oh, my God, oh, why are you going to hit that little guy? <laughs> you know, I love that little guy. And then I uh, sold every T-shirt I had. I had <laughs> T-shirt, and out of sympathy, they bought every shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I also wanted to ask you about that 1990 Night of the Champions you did, because you looked unbelievable for that show. Well, see, now, that show, this is crazy. I hadn't trained. I hadn't touched anything in 10 years. 10 years. Wow. 10 years. It had been the last show, whatever it was, eight to 10 years. I can't even remember. Yeah. I had worked out a little bit here and there, but I was in no kind of shape. All I was doing was working and come in the gym, touch the weights and leave. So I was in no kind of shape. And one of the guys at the gym, which I won't name, uh, they brought in, I don't know if you remember, the kid from Buffalo. That He looked very, very good. The young kid, the blonde-haired kid, that he was short like me, but he had a tremendous physique. Okay. And they said, "This would, this is going to be the new giant killer." Ah, uh, okay. I said, "Okay, that's good." Was it Vince Comerford? Vince Comerford. Okay, that was him. And so, the guy that said it was some kind of uh, an investor or something, and he was promoting Vincent. And I think he had George Fair with him. So. I, I, so they said, Danny, you know, you great your time, but you can't compete with this new era of guys. Mm -hmm. Well, I got five grand and says I can. <laughs> and so they said, really? I go, yeah. So I trained my ass off. Okay. I mean, I was training twice a day. And near the end of that show, after about 16, 17 weeks of training, I would not even lift. I would get up seven in the morning and I would get on the life cycle back then. And mm -hmm. I would fight for three, four hours, three hours, two hours, sometimes wow. Wow. without getting off unless I had to go to the bathroom or something. But even then I, I would, I would do three, four hours. So my legs got huge from that. Mm -hmm. I had it on a heavy cycle and the hamstrings were the best it ever been. But I weighed 245 for that show. No way. 245. Yeah, that's what I weighed. Nobody understands that. It was the heaviest I ever was. Yeah. So I went to Toronto. I didn't have a great tan, but I got second. And at the time, uh, the young buck that uh, Joe was promoting. Uh, Eddie, he, Robin, he, Eddie Robinson. Yeah, Eddie Robinson there, whatever. And he was tremendous too. And yeah. he beat me. Yeah. So, and, and so now I had a week more, I think two weeks for, for uh, night of the champions. Beacon theater. And that's when, uh, the promoter come up to me and said, Dan, I'd love to have you at this show. 
And I said, well, you know, what's in it for me? He says, well, you know, you look tremendous. If you keep going, you, you, you could do well. Yeah. So I said, all right, let me tighten up a little bit. And then I got a call stating that Momo Benazia could not lose the show. It was already bought. <laughs> That's what I was told. Wow. So I said, oh, really? And then who else? And, well, Dorian Yates is flying in from, from Europe. And, and so I said, well, you know what? This would be a great time to compete again. So I killed myself. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't dry out like I could have because I, you know, I was told you can't win. So I get out there and I think there's like 60 bodies, 70. Yeah, there used to be a lot. I mean, every guy in the world was there. Right. Everybody. I mean, uh, Johnny Morant was like 6'6", weighed about 300 pounds. Right, or right. And it was huge. And so I'll never forget that, you know, I, I get out there and I'm, I'm getting ready to come out there. And uh, Dorian says to me, what the hell are you on? <laughs> he, he was asking me, what are you taking? <laughs> and so I get out on stage and, you know, we pose. And uh, Momo Benazia was, you know, he was rock hard. Yeah. But he, his body wasn't perfect, you know. He had right. high calves. And if you look at certain, certain shots with me and him, I kicked his ass. Yeah. And then he was very muscular, and I didn't dry out where he would dry out completely, but eventually he killed him. Right, right. I'll never forget that my little brother was there with a good friend of mine. And the guys, one of the vitamin companies, I guess, was promoting Momo Benazia. And evidently, a lot of money was put up. And basically, they were nervous, saying, is that guy going to beat us? Yeah. And people involved saying, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Are you sure? Because the <laughs> audience was going nuts. Giant killer, giant killer, giant killer. <laughs> I got third. But you know what? It was still pretty good. Oh, yeah. The lineup there was monstrous. Every guy was trying to come out to go to the Olympia. Right. And so they were all there. And, of course, Dorian got second. Momo won it. And, and then the mistake I made was I, I went to the back and Joe Weider went nuts. Oh, I'm a giant killer. Fly to LA. I'll pay all the expenses. Well, <laughs> I want you to keep going because he wanted me to compete against Lee Haney. At the Olympia, yeah. For the Olympia, so the giant killer against the giant. Right. So he was already selling yeah. magazines. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and I should have done it. Joe was right. I was wrong. I went to Europe instead. Oh, really? Yeah. And I went to Europe and did the tour and just to make the money. And, uh, and the reality is I didn't even train out there i got off the diet i didn't care i was getting fifth and sixth without even trying and then doing seminars after because that's that's, we want you know so that's what i did but it was a big mistake because i would have liked i should have competed the one time against this guy because i had 245 pounds of weight and if i had maintained that and got even more cut yeah i could have been dangerous i'm not saying i could beat this guy but it would have been a good show but at the same time, I thought Lee Labrada was very good, and he didn't. I thought maybe once or twice he might have should have done better. I, I yeah. thought he he could have done better. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And you were almost forty years old in that contest, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Wow. They, they say you peak at forty. Well, hell, I did. <laughs> wow. So, what was your last show, Danny? Well, well, we did the WBF, right? You went we, over we there. We did the European tour. I come back, and then that's when Vince came to me and said, look, I need your help. And we argued about money. Then he finally gave me money. But what mm-hmm. people didn't realize, what, what Vince was trying to do was start a bodybuilding federation, except make it different. Yeah. You know, promote it where everybody could make thousands of dollars. Yeah. And of course, you know, you got blackballed because you crossed the line. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time, you know, we were doing pretty good, believe it or not. Uh, Cause he did the, he was doing, he, he went to Vegas and he did the show and they and they did it. And that's when the Olympia moved there and copied everything we did in order to promote and make money. Yeah. But at the end, of course, he shut down because Lou Ferrigno was supposed to join us. Yeah. Okay. He was supposed to get some ridiculous amount of money. And you know what? He didn't do it. At the last minute, Arnold talked him out of it. Oh, Arnold talked him out of it. Okay. I, I believe Arnold talked him out. Of it. That's what I was told. I'm not sure. Right. But, uh at the last minute, he, he changed his mind. Hmm. And he, it was a mistake on his part because he could have done well in that. Yeah, yeah. Vince would have promoted him. 
He would have done very well, but and that would then we fell apart because of the steroid controversy. Yeah, and right. The second year, right? Only got caught with the stuff, and then he kind of turned state's evidence. Is what I was told. I don't know how true that was. Uh -huh. And we, you know, it it, it just uh, it, it fell apart, and yeah. we had to get off the drugs. I was already off, and Vince would say, you know, let's test Danny because he's clean. We know for sure. <laughs> You know, they did, we're going to do testing. The only one that got tested was me, and I looked the worst. Because right. I was the only one that was clean. Right, right. I was the scapegoat, but I got yeah. paid well for it, so I didn't care. Yeah. I wonder if they would have kept going with that, if it would have uh, turned out to be something big. Well, I think it, it, it I wish it would have kept going, because what happened was, for the first time, Joe Weider started paying everybody. Yeah, he got nervous. Yeah. Even yeah. Minnie Mouse got paid, you know, whereas before it didn't happen. Yeah. And if he was a pro, you stay with me, you get a small. Whereas once that ended, then the, the checks all ended. So yeah, yeah. It, 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 if if I think Vince would have kept going, he, he could he could have really done something with bodybuilding. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, everybody's saying, Oh, look how stupid it was. Uh, but the thing was you you talk about making money. You know, it's about making money. And, and so today I, I don't know if the guys are making a ton of money. But to me, bodybuilding is the worst sport in the sense of money because you're the best in the world. What are the guys? I mean, the NBA players getting a hundred million dollar contract. I know. These guys keep saying to me, "Well, you made fifty thousand or half a million. I said, "That ain't no money." Right. I, what's right. it cost to be in the shape these guys are in now? I know. I know. You know, it, it's they're like, "Oh, you know, half a million dollars." No, not for what they do. The sacrifice. You're sacrificing your body. They're not going to live to be seventy like me. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. And I'm I'm a walking corpse now, so I can't even imagine these guys. Right, right. Yeah, I remember I, I went with a friend of mine. He was in real estate. And we went to the Mr. Olympia like 10 years ago when it was in Vegas. And when they started announcing the placings and they said what the prize money was, he looked at me and goes, Are they serious? That's all they're getting? You know, he couldn't believe the fifth place guy in the world or the fourth place guy in the world was getting like, you know, twenty thousand dollars, you know. Right. So, yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. And it's always been the IFBB and the promoters get the money. Mm -hmm. And that's sickening. Yeah. And sad because think about this. When I competed, I watched Sergio get a thousand dollars from Mr. Olympia. Right. Thousand bucks. Right. Right. So, yeah. so they're telling me, well, you know, that's not a lot of money. The time that you put in the sacrifice. Yeah. You know, like bodybuilding is like no other sport. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. You, you give your heart and soul. Yeah, and and to get, I, I guess you do it for the honor. But I, the only difference today is you've got the the internet where you can get out there and talk BS, mm -hmm. and you get a following. You can make good money. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. So thank God for that for the guys because I, I just don't feel they get paid enough. Right. Yeah, you know, like when you were doing the Olympia or not the Olympia, the Universe in seventy six, seventy seven. You said Why World of Sports was covering it. It was kind of seen almost like a legitimate sport, you know, and I was, right. and, you know, I was like, hoping then it was going to make it to the Olympics and, and yeah, really be right. You know what, Wild World of Sports was filming in the 81 Olympia too, and they shut down when they saw the booing. Yeah, and yeah. That video was never seen. As you notice, there's no video of the 81 Olympia. It's hard to find a anything. little video that Franco had that they taped themselves. Right, right, right. But there's right. nothing on the 81 Olympia. Yeah. Guess why? Because I was there. That's my <laughs> luck. The right. trail of tears, I call it. Right. Every other show, you got pictures, videos, right. not the 81 Olympia. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, and, and that was, you know, and what people don't realize, too, that in 1977, when I competed and I got pushed out of the universe, yeah, Ben Weider was a hairline away from getting bodybuilding in the Olympics. Really? That's how close it was. Hmm. He was working very hard trying to get bodybuilding into the Olympics. Yeah, I know it was his lifelong dream. And, and they were very close because he had the power and the connections. Yeah. And yeah. they were very, very close. And then it fell apart. Yeah. And to me, when Joe Weider and Ben died, it was over. Yeah, yeah. Once they left, because Joe Weider loved the game. You know, he, he loved the magazine. He'd work seven days a week on that thing. Yeah. He, yeah. he would call me in the office on a Sunday. Die, what are you doing? Joe, what do you want? I want you to come and look at the stuff. I want and he just worked and worked and he, yeah, he loved, loved the magazine and, and he just, he, and he made bodybuilding. That's why, you know what? 
to me, I feel like I got ripped off financially, but you know what? Joe had the vision that nobody had. Right, right. Yeah, no, nobody's going to replace him. Right. He moved from New York to L.A. and made it happen. So yeah. if you weren't smart enough, that's your problem. So I got to blame myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to understand who I was. But, you know, I was dumb in the sense of I would get in tremendous shape thinking everybody could do this. Anybody could do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there with all these famous people. I never took a picture. Yeah. That's, that's how stupid I was. Right, right, right. What kind of a portfolio could I have today? Yeah. But yeah. I would think this is just normal. Yeah. And guess what? It wasn't normal. Right. And, and now that I'm 90 years old, I realize you were a lucky guy. You were there in a good time. Yeah. And you were blessed. And as, as much as things didn't work out the way you wanted, it was it was a it was a good show. Yeah. Before I let you go, Dan, I want to mention a couple of names and you could just give me your thoughts on, on uh, these guys. Um, first one is Mike Menser, because I know you and Mike were uh, kind of close, right? You were friends. Yeah. Him and I were neighbors. We became very close. Look, Mike was a very smart man and he was way ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, you know, you, you, I never forget being with Mike. We were talking one day and he said, you know, Dan, I'm going to give this Olympia crap two years. And if I don't win, then I'm out. I'm not going to, his philosophy was, I'm not going to waste 10 years of my life chasing the title. That's exactly I'm move what he on did. To other things. And that's what he did. Yeah. And that's who Mike yeah. was. Yeah. Great guy. And I was sad to hear that he died so young. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. What about Ed Corney? Because you guys were also close. Ed right? Corney, I love this guy. Uh, him and I trained together. And he did a show in New York where he stayed with me when I lived in L.A., Okay. And I helped him train, and he did very well. But that guy was a hardworking man, and he had a—he was. There ain't gonna be another Ed. I know that much. Yeah. He's true blue. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed like a real cool guy. He seemed no, like he a real was cool guy. guy on the planet. A good heart. Yeah. Uh, but he was another guy that don't mess with him. Oh yeah. <laughs> He'll pull your ears off, you know. <laughs> no nonsense guy. Don't yeah. disrespect me. He used to be a bouncer, right? In San Francisco. Yeah, that's yeah. What he, was. he was a badass. Yeah, yeah. He was bad. Right. What about uh, Sergio Oliva? Sergio Oliva, to me, was one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, even to this day. Mm -hmm. I say uh, if he calmed himself down a little bit with the science uh, yeah. and a little, little more earthly work, we never really got to know Sergio because he didn't get the publicity he deserved. Yeah. He was always, he was like me, except I didn't have what he had. Yeah. And, and he was, he was tremendous. And I still think to me, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. I remember when he came back in 84, they had those shots at world's gym when he was training there and you were like pointing at him and you could tell everybody respected him. You Waller, Roger Callard, all you guys. No, no, he was, he was just, I'm telling you when he walked into a gym, it stopped. Yeah. He's never seen so much muscle on a guy. I know. I know. I know. I was in a contest in Chicago, Danny, when I was like 17. I was, it was 1980. And he came to watch it. And when he walked in, the whole place turned around to see him. And he walked down the aisle like he was the king. I never in my life seen anybody get treated like that, you know? No, that kind of I, don't. Yeah. I mean, Arnold was the only guy that came close to that. Right, right. And, and so, and to me, Louis could have been the next guy too, because Louis was, we never got to see the best of Louis. No, we never did because he did that. I, to me, he should have won the Olympia at least three, four times. Yeah, yeah. That's how good he was. Did you know him pretty good? I remember seeing that picture of you. He was a very good guy, you know, very quiet. A uh, lot of internal conflict, but to me, a tremendous body that we never got to see the best of. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he was. He could have been great. I'm great than what he was. He was already great, but yeah. he could have been. To me, he should have won the Olympia two, three times. Yeah. But, uh, no. What about Ken Waller? You you and him were pretty close. Ken right? Waller was tremendous, uh, crazy. You know, he was a wild man. Yeah. Uh, headstrong, trained hard for shows. Always had a hard time dieting. Yeah. But he's good. You know, he got you know he got Ken got the best he could get, and, and to me, the universe was probably the limit for him because this was he. But he was strong as a bear too. You know. Yeah, he I know. Got yeah. a lot of weight and bench. But he was really, he had a big heart. Yeah, that's what and I heard about him. Yeah. He was your friend, he'd do anything for you. Right. 
Did you guys party a lot, go out to the discos and stuff? You know I hardly went out because I wasn't a no. disco guy. Okay. But he used to say to me, I'm going to take off for three days. you got to watch my house. <laughs> party. he would be gone for two days. <laughs> That's the kind of guy. You know, so the one time I went, we went out after my America, I said, I won't be doing this anymore. Right, right. I'm just not that guy. You know, I've right. always been the guy that shows up and then disappears. Yeah. I go to work. I'll do work on a house or something, but yeah. I'm not into bars. I never went to bars in my whole life. Okay. That's why I was asking because I remember that story where you guys went out to the disco. I oh, yeah. It was a long night. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Robbie? Robbie, tremendous physique. I mean, Arnold and I used to say Robbie was Mr. Olympia all year till the night of the show. Yeah. For whatever reason, he would cave in a little bit. Yeah. So I don't know if it was uh, anxiety, whatever, mm -hmm. but good guy. You know, had some issues, but he had, he had a tremendous physique. Oh, incredible. And again, that upper body was like unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think back in that time, he should have tried to get at least one or two Olympias. I mm -hmm. thought he could add. Yeah. Because he ain't got as many as he did. Uh, Robbie should have got one or two. Yeah. Yeah. What about Frank Zane? Frank Zane, very smart guy. We used to call him the professor. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendous physique. The great thing about Frank is when you saw him in the gym, you say, this guy's Mr. Olympia. But he would get on stage and he would only show you his best poses. He yeah. used to say, I'm going to do 13, but they're going to be my best poses. Each yeah. pose was his best pose. So if you notice, he would angle just right, turn yeah. a certain way, and when the lights hit, you were done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and he was a good guy. He would help. He was a smart guy. I liked him a lot. He, okay. he was a very good man and a great, tremendous physique. That's yeah. what our area was great our era because you had a little bit of everything here. Mm -hmm. You had Louie, you had Robbie, you had uh, Eddie, you had Dan, you had Arnold, you had Franco. You had all these physiques up and down. I used to get thousands of letters. When I lost the 81 Olympia, I got hundreds and hundreds of letters. Please, Mr. Padilla, don't quit. Yeah. My son loves you because you're short. <laughs> it was like, please, you were, you were his inspiration. Right. All the short people are writing to me. And I said, hell, I didn't know I was short till I got into bodybuilding. <laughs> they put me in the short class. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What about uh, Boyer Cole? Boyer Cole, an another one. I, I love this guy because he's that, that southern, yeah. what the hell is going on here? <laughs> You know, and he was whatever he believed in, that was it. But again, he had a tremendous physique. Yeah, he did. You know, to me, uh, I don't, people say, oh, this part is missing. But when he put it together, those arms today could still stand with these guys. Oh, absolutely. His yeah. quads would get shredded. He had a tremendous physique, too. That's what I'm saying. Here's another guy, Boyer Cole. Yeah. He, I'm sorry, you had all these physiques. You had Chris Dickerson, Boyer Cole. Uh, there were just hundreds of physiques that you could pick one to say, okay, that's what I want to do. Or, yeah. That's the guy that I, I would like to look like. Yeah. I don't see that today. Yeah. They were all different back then, right? They all right. had their own look. Uh, everybody was different and you could choose the guy that you liked. And I want to be yeah. like that guy. Yeah. Today, who can be 300 pounds? Right. Right. I know. You know. It's like, they're tremendous. Don't get me wrong. The physiques are like out of this world, but yeah. I know parents will say, I don't want my kid doing that. Right, right, right. Back in our day, it was like, wow, this guy's cool. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. It was cool. Everybody had a weight set. I got to look like that, man. I got to get ready for the beach. It wasn't right. even about the contest. And back then, they'd say, how much can you bench? Yeah. How big are your arms? <laughs> right. You know, those are the dumb questions. You yeah, have. yeah, yeah. What about uh, Roy Callender? He was a good champion. Roy Callender, soft-spoken, really good guy. Uh, tremendous physique again. Another one. That upper body was like untouchable. Yeah, yeah. He, that's what I'm saying. We had all these tremendous physique, and he was a good guy. He never yeah. fought, never argued, never created trouble. He was a great guy. Yeah, I've interviewed him a few times, and he's super cool. Super cool guy. Yeah. What about uh, Ricky Wayne? Remember him? Oh, I loved Ricky Wayne. <laughs> he used to argue with Joe Eater all the time. Yeah. And you know what? That was another guy who had a tremendous physique. Yeah. Back in the day, very vascular. Yeah, he did. Body. People forget that. And he was he was he was a philosopher, liked to write stuff, 
Yeah. I was involved in politics. I got along with him great. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Cal a little bit, but tell me a little bit about Cal. What did you think of him? Cal Scalic, hardhead, <laughs> powerful guy, but he had a good heart. You know, if you needed something, he mm-hmm. would help. Yeah. He'd come up hard. But he he was one of the strongest guys I've seen in that gym. Mm-hmm. When I, was there. I had a guy on any given day to do a 500 bench. Yeah. And back then, that was a big number. And he'd do it twice a week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He could do an decline and an incline of five. He was pretty damn good. What do you think would have happened to him, Danny, if he wouldn't have had those fights with Joe Weider? You think he would have had a good career? I think he would have done well, but his legs were a little shy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But no, later everybody started doing implants anyway, so right, <laughs> right. And everybody had calves. But yeah. the, the the thing is, back then nobody had that perfect body, you know. Right. Right. Not till later, like a Paris came out with that beautiful physique, but really nobody was perfect. Yeah. I was too short. Arnold's legs were a little off. This guy's legs were a little off. Or yeah. this guy's back wasn't. So nobody had that perfect body. But that that's the way it is, though. I mean, right? I mean, everybody, except for Sergio, I mean, nobody was perfect. Right. Now, nowadays, well, I think well, with all the drugs and stuff, these guys don't have any weak points, right? Yeah, exactly. So, and not only that, they could, well, my calves are weak. Let me put a little oil in it. Right, right, so right. It's, like, it's totally it's artificial, like, yeah. It's real. It's, right. But again... I always, when people ask me, I say, look, that's what's in style now, then that's it. Yeah. You don't, you don't believe in that, then don't put the oil in the arm or don't put the oil in the, but obviously you look at these guys, you know, it's oil. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. their shoulders are sticking out three feet. That's right. not normal. Right. Anybody who understands exercise physiology or muscle function knows that's not possible. Right. right. But I don't ever say anything because then you sound like that guy that, like, I don't want to sound like my parents, like Elvis was no good or, or, you know, back in my day, I walked 50 miles to go to school. Yeah, so yeah. You yeah. start sounding like one of those guys, then, and I never do. I just say, you know what? Awesome. Great. Yeah. I said, but that doesn't look, doesn't that look strange to you? And they're like, no, oh, man, he's a guy who works hard. I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first year I got into bodybuilding, 77, uh, Ken Waller wrote an article for muscle builder. And he was talking about the guys going in the Olympia that year and every guy, he would be like, well, this guy's got this, but he's missing this. And this guy's got this and he's missing that. You don't do that anymore because nobody's got any weak points. It's just right. it's not everything, you know, they, they've got every muscle is built. The only thing you can cry about is everybody says there's huge guts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They Even the guts are muscular. I mean, when, when they, when <laughs> they can suck them in, you, you see right. that. You know? right. <laughs> so they're, they're kind of, you know what? They're the they're the perfect guy now, but everybody doesn't like it. So right, right, right. Doesn't make any. All our lives, we wanted to be that huge muscular guy, and now oh. they're here. Like, oh my god, it was horrible. Yeah, and now so, we're remembering your physiques from that era. Yeah, exactly. So all of a sudden, we're appreciated more. Right. <laughs> what about uh, Franco? Franco was tremendous. I like I told you, he he was very proud man. Worked hard. One of the strongest guys that I've seen also. I mean, that guy could deadlift and bench. I remember one time he, he's benching and him and Arnold are benching. And Arnold says to me, put that weight on. We put the weight on. And Franco doesn't even know what the weight is. And he's just pounding it out. Jeez. To Franco. Uh, he's just done. Ah, this, this is a little heavier than last set. And Arnold says, see, he doesn't even know. <laughs> That's how strong he was. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want uh, Joe Gold? Joe Gold was the, the, the father of father. He was the father of every bodybuilder there, you know. Yeah, yeah. He was the guy, he was he had the heart of gold. And he, he guys that were doing bad, he'd look out for him and say, Are you okay? You need a little money, mm. I can help you. He yeah. was that kind of guy. And he would never take credit or say, you know, I gave him five hundred dollars to help him. He was he was a uh, heart of gold, man. Yeah. The best. The best. Uh, how about Arnold? I'll I'll, leave, I'll uh, end it with Arnold. Arnold. <clears throat> I got along with Arnold. A lot of people didn't. Yeah. But you know what? If if you were a certain type for him, he, he was very respectful in, in a sense of. But he would Arnold was the kind of guy if he liked you, he'd say, You're doing things wrong and uh I have to go there and if I have to run you over, I will. I don't want to, so maybe you should go that way. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he was if he liked you. Right. But you know what? He did a lot for bodybuilding in the sense of Oh yeah, uh, 
he made it very popular. Pump and iron just made everything explode. Yeah. So he was very important to bodybuilding as far as I was concerned. Yeah. And I think now the way the guys disrespect him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like it. I don't either. You know, because without him, you wouldn't have what you got right now. Right. Right. In a sense. So it's kind of crappy the way they treat him. But, you know, Arnold was a very proud man. And sometimes when I see some of the crap that I've seen, I said, are you kidding me? You yeah. Know, oh, his legs were that weak. I said, you know what? For his time, his legs were great. Yeah. And yeah. tall guys didn't have great legs. Yeah. That they was, don't understand that. 50 that. years ago. Yeah. Right. They don't, um, they don't understand that. Yeah. yeah. You have to be, to appreciate Arnold's physique, you had to be there. Right. Tremendous. Right. Upper body, even the legs when he got them right. Very good muscle control. No, Arnold was a good guy. Yeah. A lot of people, ah, but Arnold was all about business. He took care of business, and you could learn from Arnold if you watched. Mm -hmm. What did he think of your physique, Danny? Arnold would always say to me, uh, if you'd be good cut up, you'd, you'd have a tremendous physique. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one time when I competed in, in, uh, in the universe, and I was walking out, and he was doing, uh, he was doing the mic for uh, Why Will the Sports. Yeah. Time. Mm -hmm. Stop, we talked, and then he said, uh, I, I think no one can beat you tonight. You, you're the winner, easy. Yeah, so yeah. he knew for me that I had that physique. He knew that I was a little lazy though, because I really never showed the emotions. But mm -hmm. he also knew that he's only five foot two, so I gotta worry about him. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I think Ricky Wayne once said that you and Arnold kind of had similar physiques. You have that, um, not the real dense, hard muscle like Franco did, but that. Full, you know, so we had that round, round muscle, muscle, yeah. and yeah. we could we could walk into a gym, and two minutes later, after thirty minutes of training, go, what the hell is right. that? Would blow up, That's right? The same guy that just came in, right, right, and exactly. We would yeah. blow up like a balloon and go back to normal. Yeah, right. <laughs> we both had that same. That's true. Yeah. So, how are you doing today, Dan? You you still staying busy with personal training? And I do a lot of personal training. I don't want to, but I have to. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's easy money, you know, and it, I like making people change. And yeah. most of the people that I get are, I rehabilitate a lot of people, you know, people that have had injuries. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of these people are into the CrossFit and I tell them, you know, some people should be doctors. Some people should be lawyers and some people sh should be athletes. You're not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> they get mad at me and then right. I got to rehabilitate them, you know, cause they get hurt. Right, right. You know, I'm blessed because right now everybody's about staying in shape. They gotta yeah. have they gotta have a tattoo. <laughs> I gotta be in shape, and so business could be as much as I want. Yeah, yeah. I try to limit it, but I'm blessed to be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah, and you look healthy. You look good. I'm trying to stay young, but it ain't working. But <laughs> you know, bits and pieces are falling off. The hip hurts. Right. <laughs> the knee hurts. The back hurts. Yeah, yeah. I still got a full head of hair. Yeah, you do. All yeah. black yet. Absolutely. Like, you dyed your hair because my wife's a hairdresser. Yeah. You dyed your hair, right? <laughs> Even Arnold said it to me one day. I walked into the gym and Gold says, Danny, is that your hair? Is that a wig? <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> you know, because when I saw Franco, he was old. Yeah. When yeah. I saw Franco, he, he looked old. Yeah. I was shocked when I saw him. Yeah. I didn't really, he didn't age that well for me. No, he didn't. But what, you know, what do you think about when he passed away a couple of years ago? I was, I was sad. And, you know, me too. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's a, you know, he was a great guy. He, he was so strong. People don't even realize how strong he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he heard his knee running with a refrigerator. Yeah. Not walking, running with it. Running. <laughs> and he hit that hole. That guy was so strong. It was freaky. I know. But yeah. you know what? He was a good guy, too, and he was a hard worker. He deserved all the good things he got because he earned yeah. it. Right. He really right. did. Yeah. And that's yeah. why, for me, the 81 Olympia, I just wanted to compete against mm -hmm. what I thought was the greatest short guy for that time for me. Yeah. yeah. You know, who else was there? There was nobody there like beside him and me. Not yet, anyways. Guys were coming up, but right. he was the guy that I said, you know what? I'd like to compete against someone, win or lose. I could say I competed against them. And yeah. that was it for me. Yeah. All right, Dan. Well, I appreciate all the time you gave me tonight. And uh, I was really looking forward to talking to you. I think you're a real legend in the sport. Great personality and uh, great guy. 
And so it was great to talk to you, Danny. I'm glad you made time for this. All right. Take care of yourself and may the body building gods be with you. <laughs> Thanks, <Danny. laughs> All right, buddy. Take care. Be safe. All right, Bye -bye. Buddy. You too.